Hi, myself Alex Tharun, Assistant Professor, Civil Department, Trinity College of Engineering. Now I am going to take a small session from Fluid Mechanics and my topic is Pressure and its measurement. First of all, let me introduce to you what is a fluid pressure. It is nothing but the normal force acting on a fluid per unit area. We can represent the pressure as P is equal to P is equal to force divided by A. So, what will be the unit of the pressure? Let's see. The force, the unit of force will be Newton and the area is meter square. So, the unit of pressure will be Newton per meter square and it is also called Pascal. The other important units that we come across during the problems in fluid mechanics are first is bar. 1 bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. And also we can represent it is it in Pascal, Mega Pascal, Kilo Pascal and Gigo Pascal. They are 1 Kilo Pascal will be equal to 10 raised to 3 Newton per meter square. 1 mega pascal is equal to 10 raised to 6 newton per meter square and 1 giga pascal is equal to 10 raised to 9 newton per meter square. These are the important units that we come across during solving the problems in fluid mechanics. Next, let me say about an important law which has to be introduced to you before going into the next topic that is hydrostatic law, law of hydrostatic which states that which states that the rate of change of pressure in the vertical direction is equal to the specific weight of the fluid that can be represented as rate of change of pressure with respect to vertical direction that can be written as dou P by dou H will be equal to negative of weight density that can be represented as rho into g or is equal to gamma. So we can write pressure will be equal to rho g h or gamma into h. So there is a negative sign in front of this term. So uh, now I will say what is the importance of this negative term. It's very simple and nothing but this negative sign represents that from a point, from a point as we go upwards, the pressure will get decreased. So the negative sign shows that from a point if we go upwards, the pressure will get decreased and from a point if we go downwards, the pressure will get increased. That's the only reason why we are using negative sign. But by solving the problems, there is no need to represent this negative sign. But the concept must be clear to you that is from a point if you go downwards the pressure get increased. That is the main point in this hydrostatic law. Next, next let us see what are the types of pressures. Basically, there are two types of system used for measuring pressures. First type of pressure is the datum or reference is taken or the pressure is taken from the atmospheric pressure. If the pressure is taken with respect to the atmospheric above, atmospheric pressure above or below, the pressure measurement is known as gauge pressure or vacuum pressure. That is, suppose this line represents the atmospheric pressure. If the pressure measurement is taken from this atmospheric pressure to upwards, that is uh, from this atmospheric pressure upwards, this the pressure measurement is known as gauge pressure or we call it as positive gauge pressure. If the pressure measurement is taken from the atmospheric pressure downwards, we call it as that is this pressure measurement and this point is called as negative gauge pressure or we call it as vacuum pressure. Now the other system that is used for calculating or measuring the pressure is from the reading taken from absolute zero. Absolute zero is also known as complete vacuum. If the reading is taken from the complete vacuum or absolute zero, suppose we represent this line as 
absolute zero value. If the reading is taken, if the pressure measurement is taken from the absolute zero, this is known as absolute pressure. Absolute pressure. So these are the different types of pressure that come across in fluid mechanics. So before going into the next topic, let me say some points about atmospheric pressure. What is atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure is nothing but, but the force or the pressure exerted by the atmospheric air on the body to which it is in contact. That is simply known as atmospheric pressure. Usually atmospheric pressure is calculated using barometer. So the atmospheric pressure is also known as barometric pressure. At the mean sea level, at the mean sea level, atmospheric pressure is equal to 10 raised to 3 meters of water. Also, it can be represented by 76 centimeters of mercury. Now, let me say how this 10.3 meters of water and 76 meters of mercury has obtained. It is nothing but, uh, we know pressure is equal to rho g h. So in case 1, while we are representing in terms of water, atmospheric pressure 1, atmospheric pressure is represented at 1 bar, that is 1 bar is equal to 10 raised to 5 Newton per meter square. And it is equal to, in case 1, we are taking the case of water. So we can write rho w, that is density of water, into G value 9.81 into HW that is height of water. We know the density of the water is 1000 into 9.81 into HW. So we get HW is equal to by solving this we get 10.3 meters of water. That's the reason why we can represent one bar that is one atmospheric pressure is equal to 10.3 meters of water. Now let's see similarly we can also we can also find how this 76 centimeters of mercury has occurred. That is 10 raised to 5 is equal to that is case 2 for mercury. We can represent rho hg that is density of mercury into 9.81 into hhd that is height of mercury. And we know that the density of the mercury is equal to 13,600 kilogram per meter cube. By solving x, we get 76 centimeters of hg, that is 0.76 meters of mercury. That means one atmospheric pressure is equal to 10 raised to 3, 10.3 meters of water and also is equal to 76 centimeters of mercury. Now let's move to the measurement of pressure. There are mainly two types of equipments used for measuring pressure. First one is by using manometers and the second one is by using mechanical gauges. So first one is by using manometers. In manometers there are mainly two types of manometers. First is simple manometer and other is differential manometer. differential manometer. What actually is the manometer is manometers are the instrument used for measuring pressure by balancing the fluid column with its own fluid or by balancing to the some other fluid. So, uh, simple manometers are again classified into piezometers and U2 Manometer. Piezometer is piezometer. I will show a small graph of piezometer. 
so you can understand it very easily. This only device like this. That is where the it's a just a tube. It is connected to a point where the uh, pressure is to be calculated, and uh, we can say this point as small uh, capital letter A, and this is the piezometer. If we cut to this point, uh, the water level in this piezometer will rise up to which the water pressure is acting at the point A. So we can calculate the pressure at A. P A is equal to with respect to the height of height of this fluid column. 